Craig, I think they're ranked maybe top 10 in punt return and kickoff return. What, what, are they, what are they doing well? Well, Jim, they're doing about everything well. I think they're ranked in the top 10 in almost all major categories right now. Um, you know, punt return wise, they got a, a really explosive returner in Harris, number 11, uh, who's obviously a dual guy. Um, you know, it's fast, quick, explosive, gets the top speed quickly, and he can make guys miss in space. Uh, so we, we've got our hands full. Uh, but they also have a really good core group uh, that do, do a great job of blocking for him. So uh, we'll have to go down there and play our best game and, um, you know, try to figure out what we need to do to contain Harris and uh, kind of go from there because they're, they're explosive and they're, they're really good. How much uh, you take it as a, as a when you get a, a touchdown like you did near the goal line that was set up by maybe Brett's punt? How much do you guys take pride in that? How much does Brett take pride in that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's the one thing Coach Rabel brought up in the meeting about playing complimentary football, and we try to do that each and every single week of helping out our team win. And you know, when we get a chance to go and pin an opponent down inside the ten five yard line uh, like we did this past week against the Rams. You know, it gives the guys confidence and it gives a little bit of energy to our to our team. And uh, then obviously the defense stepped up, got a pick, and then offensively we went down there and scored. Uh, so, you know, we, we take pride in that. And obviously Brett has been doing that for a very long time here. So uh, it's always good that we can help the team out in certain aspects. Talk about core guys. You brought Zubner back sort of late in camp. Why was it important to get him back in here? What, what does he add to your team? Yeah, he one, he's a leader. Um, you know, he's been doing it for quite some time and he can help out the rookies, uh, you know, talking to them because, you know, he came in the league. No one really knew about him, uh, really kind of set his set the tone for him being a really good special teams player early on in his career. Uh, so, you know, that part really helps out the young players to see a guy who comes in, works really hard and then obviously continues to stay in the game because he does really well on special teams. So we were happy to get Nick back and uh, we're hoping he can continue to play well for us. Um, Mike mentioned yesterday that uh, Des Fitzpatrick been doing pretty well on special teams on the on the scout yeah. teams as well. How important is that if he hopes to, you know, take that jump onto the onto the fifty three there? Yeah, it's it's really important. We've we've been impressed by Des. Uh, you know, for a guy who comes in, gets drafted. And then he's got to play on some special teams too. Uh, you know, it's important for him to understand that you know he might be able to get on the field a little bit quicker if he does really well on special teams. And he's continuing to put in the work, working really hard, um, showcasing his skill set for us. Uh, and he's obviously being rewarded here a couple times because he's shown out for us. So uh, really excited about him, and hopefully he continues to have that progress uh, in special teams along with offense uh, too. A significant difference from him in, in training camp? Did he? I don't know if he played much in college. But yeah, he, you know what was good? He did play a little bit in college on special teams. I know their special teams coordinator really well there in Louisville. And when we drafted him, he said, hey, you know, Des will be able to play some special teams for you at some point in time, whether it's going to be early or late. He felt like he had some skill set to help us out. Um, and I think what happened was early on, Des is trying to feel his way offensively. And then, you know, finally he realized, like, hey, you know what? You know, offensively, I'm getting better, but now special teams, I got to really start, you know, going up and, and doing well. Um, and I think he kind of kind of clicked for him a little bit. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to work with him and see if he can get better at it. I believe it was last week that I mentioned uh, Deontay Foreman as the option on kick returns. Is there something different that he brings to the group or what makes you want to involve him with? That. Yeah, I think anytime you get a bigger person back there who can break arm tackles um, and just even having a vision like a running back will have, whether it's hitting certain holes, cutting, doing different things like that, that always brings a different aspect more than a receiver does. Uh, because, you know, the receivers are going out there running routes and doing things like that. They're really not reading holes and gaps that are coming open. Uh, so we'll continue to work with, with him um, and try to get him better. You know, the big thing is going to be with him is consistency of catching the ball. Um, if he can consistently catch the ball, obviously we're not really worried about his running skills because he's been doing it for a very long time. So we'll continue to work with him on uh, being consistent, catching the ball, and, and see what he can do.
How much in the Denver Dallas game, I guess, over the weekend, you see a very kind of odd play. Doesn't happen a lot. When something like that happens, do you uh, show the film and use it as a reminder of, hey, this, these are the rules because, just because it, it doesn't happen a lot? Did you, did you sit in our meeting on Wednesday? Yeah. We, we try to do that each and every week. Um, you know, that's one of the things Matt and I do is we'll watch every single game uh, that went and happened around the NFL. And, you know, we'll bring up certain situations to the players, for instance, the Denver and the Dallas block punt, uh, and just kind of remind them of what we went over during training camp, off season, here's the rules, here's what can happen. Um, so we usually try to bring those plays uh, to the players, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday to their attention. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. We end up showing that play on Wednesday and just kind of talked about it again with them of, you know, why it's so key for them to understand, did it cross the line of scrimmage? Did it not? Uh, so it was really a good refreshment or a refresher for the players to get that.